Hello everyone, how are you this beautiful day, this beautiful day that the Lord has made? I'm Karen Jane Casey on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. And every Wednesday we have Sword of the Spirit. When we go out each day, we need to be dressed for success. We need to have the full armor of God on as described for us in Ephesians chapter 6. And part of the weapons that we have is the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword of the Spirit? It is the Word of God. And in keeping with that, in this episode, we always talk about passages in the Word. So, for August through December, on Wednesdays, we're having parables from the New Testament. So, I encourage you to watch or listen to those that we've done previously, and I invite you to come back. Today's episode is His Mercy. This episode, His Mercy, is based upon the parable of the laborers and the vineyard, found in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. So, as I usually do, let's read the the passage first, and then we'll get into it. Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16 in the Amplified Bible. For the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out in the morning at dawn to hire workmen for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, nine o'clock a.m., and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right, an appropriate wage. And they went. He went out about the sixth hour, noon, and the ninth hour, three o'clock p.m., and did the same thing. And about the eleventh hour, at five o'clock p.m., he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They answered him, Because no one hired us. He told them, You can go into the vineyard also. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last to be hired and ending with the first to be hired. Those who had been hired at the eleventh hour at five o'clock p.m. came and received each of them also receiving a denarius. When they received it, they put the, there were protests and grumbling to the owner of the estate, saying, These men who came last worked only one hour, and yet you have made them equal in wages to us who have carried most of the burden and worked in the scorching heat of the day. But the owner of the estate replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no injustice. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. But I choose to give this to the last men hired, the same as I give to you. Am I not lawfully permitted to do what I choose with what is mine? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? So those who are last in this world shall be first in the world to come, and those who are first last. Am I the only one who didn't fully understand this passage at the first blush? Well, let me read a commentary from Got Questions on the Internet that helps to make it abundantly clear. The landowner, whose decision to pay all the workers the same was an act of mercy, not injustice, representing God, whose grace and mercy also shed are shed abundantly upon those of his choosing. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not, therefore, depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. That's in Romans 9, 15 through 16. In the matter of salvation, his grace and mercy are given to those whose self-righteous workers could never obtain it. We are all sinful and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3. But His grace is sufficient to redeem all who believe. Whether God calls someone early or late in life to partake of His grace, the glory and praise for our salvation is His and His alone and in no way amounts to unfairness. 
Just as the landowner had a right to do what he wished with his own money, so does God have the right to have mercy on whom he will have mercy. The message in verse 16, the last will be first and the first last, is that no matter how long or how hard a believer works during his lifetime, the reward of eternal life will be the same given to all, an eternity of bliss in heaven in the presence of God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The thief on the cross in Luke 23, whose life of service was limited to a moment of repentance and confession of faith to Christ, received the same reward of eternal life as the Apostle Paul did. Of course, Scripture also teaches that there are different rewards in heaven for different services, but the ultimate reward of eternal life will be achieved by all equally. Well, we're talking about God's mercy when he lets his believers enter into the kingdom of heaven. Scriptures tell us we cannot earn our way to heaven, not by the good things that we do, but by faith through his mercy and grace in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 10 in the Amplified Bible. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God. Not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Wow. So we are saved through his mercy, not because of the good works we have done. We can't earn our way to heaven. We rely on his mercy and grace through Jesus Christ. I always love the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus. John 3.16 explains it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus himself told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Are you a believer? Do you believe that Jesus is the only Son of God? That he suffered and died on the cross for you to pay for your sins and he defeated death? Do you know that Jesus is the only way to eternity in heaven? We each have free will to decide whether to believe in Jesus. Is the Lord working on your heart and mind right now? If so, I urge you to respond, to confess it out loud, to confess Him out loud. Speak repentance, faith, believing, and acceptance of Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In Romans 10, 8-9, it instructs us to, in faith, acknowledge and confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord. And in that, we're recognizing that His power, His authority, and majesty as God. In our confession, we demonstrate that we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. When we believe and confess Jesus, we become His. We are born again. We are saved. It doesn't matter whether a person who comes to Jesus is 12 years old or 100 years old. It only matters that they became a part of his kingdom. Once we belong to the Lord out of gratitude for his mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, then we're motivated to do good works in serving him and serving others. We share the good news of Jesus with the desire that all may come to his kingdom. Well, here's something I wrote in my recently published book, Joy in the Valley, the seven Ps. Do not allow yourself to be pitiful 
because power exists when you peacefully and patiently pray to God, your provider and protector. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll join me every Wednesday on Sword of the Spirit, which is with the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. And every Monday we have Hope and Faith Journey, where we cover challenges and and sufferings that we may face. And we find encouragement, hope for healing. And um, this is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, domestic violence, victim advocate, and ambassador for Christ. I encourage you to go to my website contact page and share with me your comments, your suggestions. I appreciate any feedback you may have. And my website is KarenJaneCasey.com. When you get there, you will see uh, resource material regarding domestic violence. You'll see my books, my blogs, and podcasts. And I just want to ask you, if you've read any of my books, you've, if you've watched it or heard any of my podcasts, and they've affected you, given you positive, positive change, you've encouragement, hope for healing, then let me know about it. Thank you and God bless.